For a good posture, all you need to do is stack a book on your head and roll your shoulders back and do- Wait, what? Posture. Everyone in this feminine community seems to talk about it and touch on it, but I'm just going to take it one step further. Let's talk about strengthening those muscles that are used for good posture. Let's talk about why the core is vital for good posture. Let's talk about the reasons why your posture might be suffering. Sure, the generic pull your shoulders back and balance a book on your head, stand up tall is cute and traditional. And if you know me, you know I love traditional, but do you know what else I love? Health and fitness. With a background in health and fitness, I'm a nerd for this kind of stuff. Good posture is everything when it comes to executing proper form. And not only does it make you look more confident, but it improves your overall health, okay? Like, that's pretty important in and of itself. And if your health is improved, then your confidence is automatically going to be that much higher. Not only is good posture good because of exercise and proper form, but it's good for everyday daily life too. So let's begin. Why might your posture be suffering? Your posture could be suffering from a slew of things. Maybe it's your nine to five desk job. Maybe it's anxiety and depression. Maybe it's an injury that you never recovered from, or maybe it's looking down at your phone too much all day long. Poor posture is caused from weak and tight muscles. And if your neck, your back, and your shoulders always seem to be sore, then you might be suffering from poor posture. Have no worries though, dear friend. With time, patience, and accountability, your posture can be corrected. Having a strong core is needed to help you from slouching forward, arching your back too much, lower back injuries, neck kinks. Think of your core like a corset because that's truly what it is, nature's corset. Have you ever seen one of those body shapewear things that are meant to help you with your posture and they have like the straps and they kind of go underneath here and they hold everything up and pull your shoulders back? Well, that's basically what your body is supposed to be doing is that exact type of thing. So let's talk about the core muscles that need to be strengthened in order to make good posture that much easier to achieve. From top to bottom. So the first muscles are your trapezius muscles or your traps. And those are the, sh the muscles that connect to the spine and the shoulder blades and stabilize the upper body for good posture. The next muscles down are the latissimus dorsi muscles or lats. This muscle connects the shoulder blades, the upper arms, the spine, and the pelvis, making it a critical stabilizer for the core. Next, you have your gluteus maximus, or your glutes. Most people know this as your butt, or your bottom, or your rear. This is one of the largest muscles in the body, and this is a powerhouse muscle that is responsible for functional movement, such as walking. Next up, we have the gluteus medius. These are also part of your glutes. These help to balance you and keep you from falling sideways when you walk or stand. Finally, we're getting into the abdominal muscles, or abs for short. This is your body's girdle, your core's core. So the first muscle we have is the deepest muscle, and it's the transverse abdominis. It's located under the obliques, under the internal obliques, and it's the deepest of the muscles and wraps around your spine for protection and stability. This is the muscle that holds all of your organs in. And then we have your internal abdominal oblique. It's located under the external obliques and runs in the opposite direction of them. And then we have the external abdominal oblique. Think, your think of your waist when you think of these muscles. And these are located on the sides and the front of the abdomen. And then you have your rectus abdominis. These are the muscles that are most visible. These are located under the front of the abdomen, and these are often referred to as the six-pack. Moving down, we have our hip adductors, not our hip abductors, our hip adductors. And these are commonly known as your inner thigh muscles. These muscles are often neglected though, but they are extremely important for standing, walking, and rotating our legs properly. Next we have the quadratus lumborum, or QL for short. Most people aren't even aware that they have this muscle, but this muscle plays an essential role in stabilizing the pelvis when you're upright. It also helps to support the core of the body when you're breathing. So this muscle also is the muscle that if your back is hurting, 
you're probably feeling this muscle. Last, we have the erector spinae, or spin spiny, some people like to say. I pronounce it erector spinae muscles. Spinal erectors is also a common name for them. And these muscles are responsible for holding your spine upright while you're standing and sitting, and they also help with the rotation of the spine. And for this image, we have to the far left an incorrect postural stance where his shoulders are rounded, his head is protruding forward, and his knees are bent. That's incorrect. The middle one is also incorrect because even though his legs are straight, he is protruding his head forward, causing his shoulders to round, and then he's also protruding his hips forward, which is causing his butt to cave in, which we don't want as well. The third image is correct. This is the neutral spinal position and this is where everything is lined up so your ears are lined up to your collarbone and your shoulders which are lined up to your hips which are then lined up to your ankles and your legs are straight not locked necessarily but straight you don't want a bend in your knees you want your body to be straight so that's the neutral spinal position muscles become weakened, your body has to compensate by making other muscles take over. And when those other muscles take over, that's not a good thing. For example, if you're hunching forward and you're out of that neutral position, your neck is having to work overtime to hold up your head. And your head is pretty heavy, so your neck has to work so hard to keep your head upright. So standing up in neutral position takes out that extra work for your body. So rule number one of good posture is to strengthen your core muscles. All of the core muscles that I named, strengthen them using proper form and using some weight in order to strengthen them. You can use your body weight, you can use dumbbells, you can go to the gym and use some barbells, you can use the machines, but just focus on strengthening these muscles. Rule number two of good posture is to practice every single moment of every single day, whether you're at work, at home, whether you're in a restaurant booth, or in a chair. There is no time for slouching, especially if you are trying to work on your posture. Rule number three, stop looking down at your phone. About five years ago, I went to a new chiropractor and before he saw me, he walked past the room and then did one of these like step back things and was like, hey, you're gonna really hurt your neck like that. And I was like, what? And he's like, the way you're looking down at your phone, you are straining your neck. And I was like, how else am I supposed to look at my phone? And he was like, you gotta pick it up to here. So I took that advice and my neck doesn't feel strained all the time. I hold my phone up to eye level. And I understand why people look down at their phone like this. It's mainly because of a lazy habit of just wanting to relax and look on your phone, but it's also because of privacy. So we feel like we're looking down and being private covering what's on our phone. But what we can do instead is they sell these glass screen protectors over your phone to where if you are not looking at the phone head on, if you're standing here or standing here, there nobody can see what's on your phone. So if the reason why you keep looking down at your phone is because of privacy, I highly encourage you to go and get one of these screen protectors for your phone because it will take away that, oh man, I don't want anybody looking at my screen, and you'll be able to not be lazy, use your arms, and put your phone up to your face at eye level like this instead of like this. Just try it for a few days and see how much it makes a difference in your neck if your neck seems to strain when you're on your phone. Rule number four of good posture is accountability. Hold yourself accountable and have your friends and family around you hold you accountable. Tell them that you're trying to work on your posture and you really want to fix it and it would mean a lot to you if they corrected you when they saw you slouching or when they saw you out of that neutral position. And another way of doing it is to play a game at the traffic lights and stoplights to check yourself. So if you get to a red light, check yourself. Do I have good posture right now? And then you fix yourself if you're not, and you do that at every single traffic light. Just check yourself. And over time, you will see that it will you'll just be in good posture. Another way of correcting your posture and holding yourself accountable is not what I recommend, but if you're going to do it, don't do it long term. It is the waist belt, which you don't have to put on the tightest setting to try and shrink your waist. You just need it so that you're holding your, your core upright. The other thing is this brace that you wear around your shoulders and it pulls your shoulders back. I had to wear one when I broke my collarbone. 
but that is the other option. I just wouldn't do those long term and depend on those because you don't want to have to do those every single day. You don't want something else doing what your body is supposed to be doing naturally on its own. Rule number five is to be patient. If your posture is out of alignment, chances are it did not happen overnight, so it is most certainly not going to fix itself overnight. It is going to take time and it is going to take effort and you are going to get frustrated and you are going to think, oh my gosh, my posture is just gonna be bad. I'm just going to have to go and get one of these braces. No, as long as you are persistent and patient with yourself, you can do it. And I'm telling you, it is so worth it because like I said in the beginning of the video, posture is not just for confidence. Posture is for your overall health. Posture makes you feel better, makes you breathe better, make, makes you move better, and all of those things then bring out the natural confidence. You can't just fake po good posture whenever you're going out in public. You need to execute good posture all the time. Posture is something that I am pretty passionate about, and it is something that everybody has to work on, including myself. I am not perfect, I do not have perfect posture, but I am working on it, and my posture is a lot better today than it was seven years ago. So to finish up, there are so many other things that I would like to touch on regarding posture. Postpartum posture, exercises, and so much more. So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.